Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Thursday, November the 5th of 2020. We begin with words from Charles Swindoll's Bedside Blessings. God's redemptive providence is always at work, even though, even through the most diabolical schemes and actions. So take heart, my friend. God is in full control. Nothing is happening on earth that brings a surprise to heaven. Nothing is outside the scope of his divine radar as he guides us safely home. Things that seem altogether confusing, without reason, unfair, even wrong, do indeed fit into the Father's providential plan. Let us pray. Mighty and compassionate God, you have extended to us promises of presence and forgiveness, grace and understanding. Through all history, these promises have been kept with a steadfastness that inspires faithfulness and nurtures belief. So it is with grateful hearts that we pray. Help us to be enthusiastic participants in the ongoing campaign to do your will on earth as in heaven. You have showed us what is good. Grant us the courage to let our lives be shaped by the goodness you reveal. In a world of energy-sapping frustrations and diversions from noble goals, guide us by the power and direction of your spirit. Enable us to convey the brightness of joy to persons in grief or despair, to bring healing to those suffering illness or abuse, to make peace in the midst of tensions or conflict. Permit us to perform well those things you require of us, doing justice and loving kindness and walking humbly upon your way. You do not ask us to cast a vote in your favor. You do ask us to commit our lives fully to your service and care. Therefore, strengthen us in spirit and faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture reading this evening is from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considers me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 13. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, 
so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but not as on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Amen. Our reading this evening comes from the book Life on Purpose, a devotional. Believe and see his glory. Romans 4, 18 through 21 says, Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your, your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. These verses are a great encouragement to those of us who have ever had to endure long periods of waiting before we saw the fulfillment of God's promise to us. The emphasis here is upon the fact that Abraham's situation was completely hopeless. Yet he believed God's promise to give him a son in his old age. It was many years before God fulfilled this promise to Abraham, and he made some mistakes during those years. Still, those verses don't mention Abraham's doubts, but focus instead on his faith. That fact should encourage us too, though we may struggle with our own doubts from time to time. If we hold on to God's promises, we will receive our reward just as Abraham did. If you are not feeling very hopeful today that God's promises to you will ever come to pass, I urge you to hold on to your faith. Look at these verses in Hebrews 10, 35 and 36. Do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord no matter what happens. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now, so you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. If you throw your faith away before God fulfills his promises to you, you will never receive the reward he has waiting for you. Ask the Lord to give you the patience and endurance you need to stand strong. Then do your part by hanging in there when the going gets tough. Hebrews 6.12 says, Be anxious to follow the example of those who receive all that God has promised them because of their strong faith and presence and patience. Follow Abraham's example and receive all that the Lord has promised you. Not only will you be blessed, but God will be glorified through you. And then you can be an example to someone else whose faith is faltering. The Living Bible says that Abraham praised God for this blessing even before it happened. If you'll begin thanking God right now for the fulfillment of those promises that look like they'll never come to pass, your faith will grow in leaps and bounds, and you will delight the heart of God. Take heart from this precious verse in 2 Timothy 2.13. Even when we are too weak to have any faith left, he remains faithful to us and will help us, for he cannot disown us who are part of himself, and he will always carry out his promises to us. Let us pray. Lord, whenever I am tempted to doubt your promises, Increase my faith and give me the patience I need to stand strong. Help me to take my eyes off my circumstances and rest them on your promises. Thank you for enabling me to receive all that you have promised. Amen. Whether you feel like it or not, whether your faith is on the brink of faltering or you are standing strong, 
Lift your hands even now and offer thanksgiving and praise to the one who always keeps his promise of victory to those who trust him. I hope you rest well tonight and I look forward to being with you again in our time of reading and prayer. Good night.